Hmm. Can I just get a cup of water and a cup of ice? No Chick-fil-A sauce? You recommended that I go and test the water at Chick-fil-A, and today, you're in for a treat. Not only am I gonna test their water and ice, but I'm gonna test their lemonade and bathroom tap water as well. First try. As a reminder, these are not sterile cups, so there is a chance contamination can come from them. So let's fix that. Additionally, most of these liquids were gathered by the Chick-fil-A employee, so there's potential for contamination there. And finally, the liquids were transferred into these cups in a non-sterile car, so there's a chance of contamination there as well. And what does the contamination look like? It could look like any of these growths. Additionally, the amount of contamination that can show up depends on how much interaction the water and ice has with the contaminants. Let me explain this better with the car contamination. While I was transferring containers, the liquids were fully exposed to the car air for about three seconds. With that amount of exposure, I'd be surprised if there was more than one colony from contamination. But to see any growth, we need to take this to the lab. If you're new to my channel, I'm going to go ahead and explain the full microbiology process in the lab. If you're interested in just seeing the results, feel free to skip ahead to this time. Now the first thing that I've done before testing is turn on my HEPA filter for at least five minutes. And I've cleaned off all the surfaces with isopropyl alcohol. This will basically guarantee that I'm working in sterile conditions. But just in case, while I test, I'm going to leave out what's called an air plate. This is just a normal petri dish that is open and exposed to the air. It will show me if there's any contamination that comes from my lab. Now that I'm ready to test the water, I'm going to take one milliliter of water and put it onto a triptych soy auger plate. The reason it's just one milliliter is because one, it's really easy to do math with the number one as opposed to two or three. And two, one milliliter has been determined to be a sufficient volume for this testing process. Next, I'm going to make some dilutions with these test tubes here. Now the end goal of this entire process is to count up the total amount of bacteria colonies. However, sometimes this isn't possible if there's too much growth. The point of a dilution tube is to divide the total amount of bacteria by 10, so that after so many dilutions, it is possible to count the total amount of colonies. The reason why it's divided by 10 is because I'm adding 1 milliliter of the water into a tube that contains 9 milliliters of sterile triptych soy broth. And 9 plus 1 gives us the 10 that we divide by. Now how do I know how many dilution tubes I should use? It really depends on how contaminated you expect the water to be that is being tested. In the case of Chick-fil-A, I anticipate it is fairly clean, so I've decided to only do three dilutions. And when preparing dilutions, I will always use a vortexer to fully mix the one milliliter with the nine milliliters. I will typically vortex my tubes for at least five seconds. When there is one milliliter on each plate, I will then use a sterile inoculating loop to spread out the liquid. I only need to use one loop if I go from the most diluted plate to the least diluted plate. And as long as all these plates are from the same sample. So that was just prepping one of the four samples from Chick-fil-A. So now I would just need to do the same process three more times. And when we're all done, we're gonna put all these plates in an incubator set at 33 degrees Celsius. So all that talk about contamination was really for nothing because every single sample I took had no growth. Now, a lot of the bacteria humans should worry about will grow in these Petri dishes. However, just in case, I'm going to send this out for next generation sequencing, which is a microbiology test that will catch anything that I've missed. And luckily, I had a company named MicrogenDX that reached out asking if they could showcase their next generation sequencing abilities. And they told me that they're able to correctly identify 57,000 different bacterial and fungal species. And to put that in perspective, that's about 57,000 more than I can identify using a petri dish. So obviously this is a no-brainer. So I went down to my local FedEx office and shipped them these four samples so that they could perform next generation sequencing. And once again, there was no growth detected in any of the samples, even using next generation sequencing. So what this means is that this Chick-fil-A location is obviously doing something to prevent microbial contamination. And I honestly thought I would never see this. So huge shout out to the franchise Chick-fil-A in Spanish Fork, Utah.